Hey, Malcolm, congratulations. Um, it looks like you might have the ability to play running back, wide receiver, and quarterback. Uh, what have you heard about where you project on the Dolphins team? Um, I haven't heard much. Um, just going in with an open mind, positive attitude, and ready to play wherever they, wherever they choose uh, to throw me first. What, where did they have you do at the combine? Um, I, I played wide receiver at the combine. That was my that was my main position. That's what I've been uh, training for the whole time. Uh, but uh, the willingness and I think I have the ability to to go other places if, if need be. Kim Wolf. Hey Malcolm, congrats! Uh, I believe you're the eighth Navy player to be drafted, and obviously the DOD policy changed things. Uh, for you to be able to play right away. What does, you know, that mean to you, the ability to, to, to play right away and, you know, how the Service Academy is, is providing that for you? Uh, it means a lot. It means the world. Uh, as a kid, you know, growing up, this is, this is a dream come true for sure. So just um, choosing that route and then everything unfolding um, in a very fortunate sequence for me uh, with the rule being changed. But it means a lot because I, I know a lot of guys that I played with in the past who, who didn't get the opportunity that um, definitely had the talent. Uh, it means a lot to be to be in this position. I'm very fortunate. We'll go to Chris Perkins. Hey, Malcolm, uh, congratulations. Uh, I wanted to ask you about attending the academy, why you attended there. Um, were there other choices for you? And if, if I'm not mistaken, I thought at least years ago you had to get a, a politician, a, a senator, or a uh, representative to yeah write a letter. How, how did that process go for you as well? Um, so I didn't, didn't have a lot of offers coming out of high school. Um, I had the three service academies, which were probably my best offers. So, um, kind of narrowed it down to those three uh, and chose Navy after a good visit. Um, and it's a pretty strenuous process to get into, uh, the, either one of the academies. Um, you have to get several senators, signatures and recommendations. And, uh, it's, it's a pretty long process. And, um, I ended up having to go to the prep school as well. So spent a year there before I actually got on campus. Um, but I enjoy my time there for sure. South, South and Dean. Malcolm, congratulations, man. I wanted to ask, what's probably the most exciting thing about having the ball in your hands as a playmaker? Um, just the ability to help my team and, and uh, you know, get some yards and, and hopefully get a touchdown. That's, that's the goal every time I touch the ball. So. Um, just giving them the ability to, you know, help the team out. And, uh, you know, hopefully I'll be able to do that. Adam Beasley. Uh, I think you touched on this a bit before, but just how important is it for you to show the world the, the level of athletics that are in service academies? Um, and, and if you can make a mark in the NFL, do you think it might change some opinions on the level of football at those colleges? Um, I, I don't like to talk, think about it a lot. I think, uh, you know, me and my teammates – uh, just like to go out and play football, um, but moving on to the next level, uh, just keeping that same attitude, uh, just work hard, um, do whatever I can to help the team and um, get the ball rolling there. Chris Perkins. Hey, Malcolm, um, I'm, I'm wondering uh, when you started to think the NFL is a realistic option for you, and and I'm not trying to be negative here at all, but if, if you don't uh, make it in the NFL, would, would you stay in the in the service? Or, how would, you know, have, have you even thought about a military career? What would happen then? Uh, so I'd say when I first started thinking uh, the NFL was a possibility, it was um, somewhere in my senior season, mid-season, uh, kind of felt like, you know, I have the ability to, um, having a good year, uh, might get the shot. But um, uh, given that the NFL doesn't work out, um, I'll be um, a Marine Corps officer. So uh, I serve a selected Marine Corps ground. And uh, if the NFL wasn't in the mix, I'd be going to TBS um, uh, for six months and then getting my MOS and getting my specific job in the Marine Corps. And I'd be an officer in the Marine Corps. So after the, after the NFL career, whatever it is, I'm still, uh, I still owe two years of active duty service. So um, that's still something I have to do. Omar? Why receiver? Why is that the ideal position in, in mind for you to have success? Uh, well, going into, I think, uh, 
my skills kind of translate to that position uh, pretty well. Uh, and, and it's where I was most uncomfortable as a player. Um, you know, I felt pretty natural at running back if I needed to make that transition. Uh, just wanted to be as, as good as I could um, at my weakest uh, position transition that I thought. So that's what I've been um, training for. That's what I was projected to, to play at the next level. But obviously, like I said, I'm open to anything. But um, just wanted to practice there and uh, felt like my skills translated there the best. Joe Shad. I know that uh, Patriots coach Bill Belichick has a lot of respect for the ser uh, service academies. I'm just wondering which teams spent the most time with you, which, which coaches, which front offices, what were some teams you thought might be in, in on you? Uh, the Patriots were, were definitely uh, probably at the top. Um, you know, there's a big tie with Navy and coach Belichick and um, talked to him uh, quite a few times and, uh, you know, they probably showed the most interest. Kirk? Hey Malcolm, uh, quite often special teams help guys who were drafted on the third day. How much experience do you have? And, and do you think it, it, you know, if you don't have much, could you learn it fairly quickly, do you think? Um, uh, I have, I have uh, a year or two uh, with, with, excuse me, special teams experience. Uh, I did some kickoff returns at Navy, uh, practice punt return, never got to get it, get it done in the game. But um, I feel like that's definitely going to be a, a big role for me uh, somewhere I'm, where I'm going to have to uh, shine to, you know, make it in this league. So it's definitely been something I've been practicing uh, and definitely need time to, to get better and get that, get that ball rolling in that department. Adam Beasley. Uh, is there a, a history of service in your family? Is there a reason that you were drawn to, to the armed, armed forces? Uh, yes, sir. Both of my parents were um, in the army. They both retired uh, after 20, 20 plus years of service. So um, my grandpa was also a army veteran. So there's there's a lot of army presence in my in my family and uh, even in the town that I live in. Follow up for yeah. Beasley. Yeah, I had a quick follow up. How was that conversation when you told them you're going to Annapolis? Uh, it went pretty smooth. Uh, not much problems there. Uh, both of my parents and my family were pretty supportive, but. Um, the only person that still has a problem with that is, is probably my father. Um, he, he, he tends to root for Army uh, a little more than I'd like uh, in, in some cases. We'll go to Joe Shad. I know that um, uh, at the Naval Academy, the academics are difficult and there's a lot of um, challenges with um, managing time. Um, is there anything else that you would tell someone who's never been through, you know, done that experience? that is sort of unique or helps prepare you for any situation? Um, I'd say just the, the, the handling, the lack of time to do all the things that you're asked to do, uh, time management. Uh, I think that's the biggest thing that I'm coming out of the academy with uh, is dealing with, uh, you know, the countless military obligations I have, playing football, and then the academics, and being able to mold that into one and be efficient at it. So I'd say um, coming out of the academy definitely being efficient with your time. With your time.